From Radio Deutsche Welle, it's Melody Time. We invite you to join us for half an hour of light classical music. Hello and welcome to Melody Time. I'm Diane Erickson. From the operetta Prince Methuselah, Galloping Bandits are getting us going today. Prince Methuselah, never heard of it? Well, that's hardly surprising. It premiered in 1877, but despite the popularity of the singers and the composer, it seemed that no one got too excited. The composer was no less than the great Johann Strauss. The problem was not so much the music, which was delightful as always, as it was the rather tedious plot. After running for a few weeks, the operetta Prince Methuselah was given a decent burial, but the music, by popular demand, was saved. Strauss repackaged it following his own tried-and-true formula, rearranged the best bits, and published them individually. The following bandit's gallop was one of the good bits. Johann Strauss's Banditen Gallop, played there by the Polish State Philharmonic Orchestra, conducted by Oliver Doknanyi. According to Strauss, the failure of Prince Methuselah hardly bothered him at all. Having rescued the musical baby from the boring bathwater, he went on tour to Paris, where he was welcomed like a homecoming king. The then President of the French Republic, Marshal McMahon, even bestowed on him the Knight's Cross of the Legion of Honor. In the face of such a claim, one can see how the occasional flop could quickly be forgotten. Another 19th century superstar was Gioacchino Rossini. Like Strauss, he could reel off one melody after another. At the age of 17, he started composing operas. At 21, he dashed off four of them in the space of 12 months, one of which was L'Italiana in Algeri, The Italian Girl in Algiers. It took him just four weeks to write, but was so good, it launched his career internationally. 
Following a triumphant premiere in Venice at the Teatro di San Benedetto in 1813, the opera ran at all of Europe's great theaters. It was even staged in New York and turned out to be a sensational success there as well. To this day, The Italian Girl in Algiers remains one of Rossini's best-loved operas. The lead role of Isabella is remarkable, not only for having been set for the lower mezzo-soprano range, but also for its breakneck coloraturas. Here's a sample. mezzo-soprano Eva Podles in the role of Isabella from Gioacchino Rossini's opera L'Italiana in Algeri. 
The Hungarian State Opera Orchestra and Chorus were conducted by Pier Giorgio Morandi. Once operetta got established as a new musical genre around the middle of the 19th century, composers took a leaf from Jacques Offenbach's book and looked to antiquity for a good storyline. A favorite approach was to satirize well-known public figures, ever so lightly disguising them as gods or legendary characters, which, of course, provided great entertainment. When Paul Linke presented his Lysistrata in Berlin in 1902, he was carrying on this satiric tradition, which really dates back to the Greek dramatist Aristophanes. The plot of Lysistrata revolves around the sex strike, for want of a better term, organized by the women of Athens and Sparta in order to force their menfolk to end the Peloponnesian War. The protest was successful, at least in the operetta, and one of the melodies from Lysistrata became an all-time favorite. In German they call it the Glühwürmchen Idyll, also known as Glow Little Glow Worm. <laughs> by Paul Linke from the Operetta Lysistrata, performed by an ensemble that call themselves Salon Commode. The Austrian composer Franz von Suppe based his operetta Boccaccio on the life and work of the Italian poet Giovanni Boccaccio. Now this poet may not go back in literary history as far as Aristophanes, but it's still a good 650 years since he wrote his famous collection of erotic tales entitled Decameron. In Suppé's operetta, all attention is focused on tales from the Decameron with scheming women, stylish lovers, and cuckold husbands. The poet himself has the leading role. You have to allow some poetic license here, as in real life Boccaccio was a great classical scholar, a recognized expert on Dante and a leading light in his use of Italian prose. But these more erudite qualities are forgotten whenever Decameron is mentioned. One of the dramatic highlights of the operetta is the book-burning scene, instigated by the outraged citizens of Florence. (laughs) 
Novellen Was Wir Verdammen from the Operetta Boccaccio by Franz von Suppé, the dramatic finale to the first act. An ensemble of soloists, the Bavarian State Opera Chorus Munich and the Bavarian Symphony Orchestra were conducted by Willy Bovskowski. For the International World Fair held in Paris in 1867, Jacques Offenbach and his brilliant librettists Halluvi and Mylock came up with a new operetta to entertain the visitors. Their genius lay in understanding what the tourists wanted to believe, which was quite simply that Paris was a place of wild adventure and frivolity. For the operetta Parisa Leben, Life in Paris, Offenbach embellished this wishful thinking to the point that the theater management feared they would have a scandal on their hands. But they needn't have worried. The audience loved it, and Parisa Leben became one of the greatest triumphs of Offenbach's career.
A polka from the opera to Pariser Leben by Jacques Offenbach. Istvan Bogar conducted the Budapest Strauss Ensemble. And now bringing today's program to a close, a beautiful Strauss waltz. And just for a change, this one was written by the second son, the Strauss Josef. Josef was the only one who combined both literary and musical talents. In 1864, a short story collection called Dorfschwalben aus Österreich, Village Swallows from Austria, by August Silberstein was all the rage. Josef Strauss was friendly with Silberstein and was inspired by the stories to write this waltz. Silberstein allowed him to use the book's title for the music, and in return Strauss dedicated the waltz to Silberstein.
Vienna Johann Strauss Orchestra, including Village Swallows, conducted by Willy Boskowski, with the waltz Dorfschwalben aus Österreich by Josef Strauss. And there we've run out of time, but don't forget to join us again next time. Melody Time was compiled by Barbara Anders. The editors were Dietrich Lava and Rick Fulker, the producer Romy Singh, and the studio engineer Christian Grove. I'm Diane Erickson. Melody Time was brought to you by Radio Deutsche Welle, Cologne.